I am Dr. A. Kumar Avail, Professor and Dean, School of Building and Mechanical Sciences, KS Rangasamy College of Technology, Trichangod. I am handling the course on finite element analysis. Let us talk about the introduction about the finite element courses. When the finite element method gives an approximate solution for certain problems in engineering and sciences, and it will not give the exact solution as like uh, the analytical method and the experimental method. So it is mainly used for problems for which no exact solution is available uh, for any problems. It is a numerical rather than the analytical solution and uh, one of the first applications of FEA was uh, to find out the stresses and the strains in engineering components under any kind of loading conditions. Okay. And uh, the FEA requires the large computation resources when applied to any realistic model of an engineering component. The development of the finite element method is dependent on the availability of suitable digital computers based on the memory and the graphics. And uh, FEA method can be applied to the range of material property and uh, linear elastic behavior and behavior involving deviation from the Hooke's law. And there are more uh, specialized packages for uh, particular applications like uh, the steel frame and the piping which is used for analyzing uh, the real-time problems. Depending on the type and the complexity of the analysis, the large analysis may benefit from uh, the multiple processors. And FEA can be applied to one-dimensional, it is a line uh, one-directional problems, two-dimensional and three-dimensional problems. The finite element method is now applied to problems involving wide range of phenomena like a structural and the stress analysis, dynamics and vibrations. Any continuous problem can be divided into the number of smaller elements and, and these process is called as the discretization. Okay, so once the uh, elements are assembled together and then it is called as the mesh. In two-dimensional problems, uh, the quadrilateral and the triangular uh, elements are used and uh, so whereas uh, the three dimensional problem uh, we have used the brick shaped or wedge shaped or retrogatal elements the displacement is the quantity that is first find uh, found in the analysis at a series of points called as the nodes that is coming from uh, the discretization process and uh, each uh, the corner uh, side of the elements are called as the nodes and the nodes are placed at the corners of the elements and often at the mid side depending on the element formulation. Uh, when we are going to get some more accuracy of the results, then we can use the mid side uh, the nodes also within the element. The nodes on the boundaries of adjacent elements must be common to the elements that meet there. So what is the method of uh, the engineering analysis? Uh, we have the experimental method, analytical method, numerical method or approximation method. So in the numerical methods, the prototype is used for uh, experimentation and uh, you can change the dimensions, uh, you can assemble and dis dis uh, 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 dismantle and carry out the testing procedures. We need the manpower and materials for doing the experimental method, sometimes it is and the consuming uh, um, more manpower and also it is a costly process. When you talk about the analytical methods, uh, problems are expressed by mathematical differential equations. Uh, it is readily available and it will give the quick and closed form solutions. Uh, so this analytical method can be used for the simple geometry and idealized support and loading conditions for solving any continuous problems. And the numerical methods or approximate methods, which is involved the a complex problem, uh, uh, the, the involving complex material property and boundary conditions. So it is uh, giving only the approximate solutions uh, and it is acceptable. Uh, there are three types are there. One is the function, functional approximation. Second one is uh, the finite difference method. Third one is the finite element method. So first one, the functional approximation method, there are two types are there, one is the variation approach method and the uh, what is called weighted residual method. In a variation approach method, we use the Rallerits method and the Galerikin, uh, uh, Rallerits method and the weighted residual method is the Galerikin method. So this Rallerits method is useful for solving the complex structural problems. Uh, 
uh, in the finite element analysis, whereas the weighted residual method is useful for solving the non-structural uh, problems. See, the final, second one is finite difference method, and, uh, which is useful for solving the non-structural problems like uh, uh, the heat transfer and the fluid mechanics and also the structural problems. It is applicable to any phenomena for which you have the difference elucidation for the particular problem. So along with the boundary conditions, so then it is easy for you to solve using the finite difference method. It was well for the two dimensional regions where the boundary is parallel to the coordinate axis. So then it is easy for to solve the uh, problem using finite difference method. And also then it is difficult to use when regions have curved or irregular boundaries and it is difficult to write the general computer programs using the FDM. Third one is finite element method or the finite element analysis. So instead of solving the problem uh, for the entire body in one operation, we are breaking into number of elements and combine them uh, or assembling them uh, on the elements and to get the solution for any problems. So you can solve the physical problem involving something like a complex geometry and you have the complex loading uh, methods and you have the complex material properties which cannot be solved using the analytical method. So this method is extensively used in the field of structural mechanics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, mass transfer, electric and magnetic field problems. So the general methods uh, are associated with the finite element methods are and the uh, two methods are available. One is the force method and the second one is the displacement or stiffness method. So the internal forces are considered as the unknown for any given problem uh, in the force method. So whereas uh, the displacements of the nodes are uh, considered to be unknowns uh, in the uh, problem like uh, displacement or stiffness methods. So there, that is the difference between force method and uh, displace, uh, displacement or stiffness method. So normally we are using the displacement method which is more desirable because the formulation is very simpler uh, for most of the structural problems. So then we use the finite displacement method. So next to be uh, uh, the major uh, procedure is how to solve the finite element, uh, how to solve the problem using the finite element method. Uh, so this is the step by step procedure uh, which is available. Uh, so in that uh, we have step one is the discretization of the structure. So you take uh, the given problem or continuous problem. So those problems are and uh, uh, the subdivided into number of elements that is the convenient number of uh, smaller elements. So, so the, the, the elements may be uh, uh, for the different elements which is used for the discretization that can be classified, classified as only the one dimensional element, uh, two dimensional element, three dimensional element or axis symmetric elements. And you see that in the figure in the top uh, you have the two noded element. Uh, which is having uh, the behavior of uh, holding the axial load uh, which will give the axial displacement and the second one is uh, the triangular and the rectangular element which is used for solving the two dimensional problem and the bottom you have the uh, three dimensional elements are there uh, brick element and the tetrahedral element and also the axis symmetric elements so the uh, uh, so whenever you have uh, the symmetry of loading condition, symmetry of geometry, uh, the 3D problems can be converted into two dimensional problems using the axis symmetric elements so that you can able to solve the problem. That is the way when we are going to convert the three dimensional problem into two dimensional problem. So which is uh, very easy to solve and getting the nodal displacement and the other derived parameters. The second step is uh, the numbering of nodes and elements. It is very important to have the numbering of nodes and elements to reduce the uh, memory uh, requirement of the computer systems. Okay, so uh, so then you have to take care of uh, the numbering of nodes and elements uh, with uh, quicker sol uh, solving of the problem very, very short period of time. So and also it decide the size of the stiffness matrix. Okay, so. The stiffness matrix is uh, depends upon and the uh, the size of the stiffness matrix is depends on the 
total degrees of freedom which is involved in the, uh, the entire structure. So here the size of the element is very important and the number of elements also it is very important to maintain uh, the optimum number of uh, uh, the uh, nodes and uh, the degrees of freedom so, so that uh, the size of the element, uh, size of the uh, stiffness matrix can be optimized and it can be quickly solved to get the solution. So we have to take care of uh, the one condition while numbering of the nodes. So that is the expression called the maximum node number in the element minus uh, the maximum uh, uh, minimum. Uh, so minimum node number within the element. So that will give the minimum value. Okay. So here on the one example is given here. You see that uh, we have taken the uh, element number three, and here the maximum node number is uh, ten. Uh, in the right side diagonal value and uh, right top right corner and uh, minimum node number is 3 in the left uh, lower left corner. So if you consider these two elements and uh, the difference of value is 10 minus 3 which will give you uh, the 7. Okay. So similarly the other type of uh, the uh, numbering also we can able to do that. So with the shorter numbering process and you see in the previous uh, element uh, the node numbering is in the horizontal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 then second row 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 like that. But whereas in this discretization process it is vertically uh, uh, the node numbered. So you see here 1, 2, 3, 4 in the uh, first column. The second column is 5, 6, 7, 8 like that uh, the uh, numbering is given. Uh, it's, uh, the same location you see that the third element uh, here uh, the maximum node number is 14 in the top uh, right corner and the minimum node number is 9 in the lower left corner. Uh, when you take the difference between these two value 14 minus 9 and then it will give only the 5. You compare with the difference value with the previous uh, numbering of nodes. Uh, you see the difference is 7 but whereas in this condition the difference is 5. We need to take uh, the minimum value so then based on that you can use the numbering of nodes like in this process, uh, in this uh, figure. So we have to follow this uh, type of numbering so that you can able to reduce uh, the uh, size of the uh, memory and uh, you can solve the problem very in the very short period of time and the computational time is very less when you are going to so use this. And the step, step three, the selection of interpolation function. There are two type of interpolation uh, function. You can use it one is the linear approximation and the quadratic approximation. You see here in the graphic, uh, uh, the exact solution, the solid curve is mentioned and the uh, linear approximation you see in the given in the dotted line. And you see that the deviations within the uh, uh, exact solution and the approximate solution. So there is uh, uh, the large error. Okay, so it is uncovered portion is uh, more, uh, which will give the uh, more error in the solution. In the second case, you take it uh, the quadratic approximation. The uh, solid line uh, represents the exact solution. The dotted line represents the uh, quadratic approximating approximation solution. As it is uh, more or less, uh, it is uh, same only very less percentage of error is there. So the quadratic approximation which will give uh, the accurate solution when you compare with the linear approximation method. But the uh, solving time period is very less for the linear approximation. Whereas in the quadratic approximation, you will have something like a more uh, computational time is required. And the linear approximation pi of x is equal to, there are two constants are there a naught and and a1, a0 plus a1x. Okay, in the quadratic uh, approximation, pi of x is equal to you have the three constants are involved, a0 and a1, a2. So the expression is a0 plus a1x into a2x square. So here the x square, it is a quadratic uh, equation. Uh, so which will have the more accurate in the solution. Then fourth step is uh, defining the material behavior. So the material behavior is related with the, we can relate with the Hooke's law. The stress is directly proportional to strain and uh, uh, you see that the strain, uh, displacement and the stress or strain relations are necessary for deriving the equations for, for the each element. It is 
uh, the one dimensional deformation the strain displacement uh, relationship is e is equal to do u divided by do x here e is the strain uh, which is unitless value and do u divided by do x here u is the uh, displacement okay the stress strain relationship uh, based on the hook law is uh, sigma is equal to e into uh, capital e to small e that means uh, the sigma is a stress and uh, capital e is uh, represents the x modulus and the small e represents the strain here uh, the strain you have unitless value and uh, Young's modulus and Newton per meter square and stress value which will give the Newton per meter square and uh, 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 the uh, material property relates uh, the stress and the strain. Uh, it is uh, based on the Hooke's law, uh, so within the elastic limit, okay, in the linear region. So the step five, uh, derivation of the elemental stiffness matrix and equations, okay. Uh, the element because uh, the whole structure is divided into number of elements and, uh, and then you have to uh, uh, derive the elemental stiffness matrix uh, based on the type of element which, which is used to solve the problem and you have to derive the uh, shape function you have to derive the strain displacement matrix and then you have um, with that you can able to derive and the elemental stiffness matrix okay so for the particular element if you are going to use the two noded axial bar element so you need to derive the shear function you need to derive the strain displacement matrix and you need to calculate derive the stiffness matrix so that you can able to calculate the elemental level stiffnesses once you calculate the elemental level stiffnesses and then you can go for assembly maybe the next step uh, and the general form of the elemental level equation is nothing but the stiffness into displacement vector is equal to force vector. So that is what it is given in the problem, the in the uh, screen PPT. So KE it is nothing but uh, the elemental stiffness matrix. UE is nothing but the displacement vector that is equal to FE is nothing but the force vector. So here the elemental stiffness matrix you. Uh, you have to know the uh, what is called the size of the elemental stiffness matrix uh, so that uh, the number of displacement vector unknown displacement vector uh, that also will give the size of the displacement vector that is equal to force vector so here uh, how to calculate the size of the stiffness uh, elemental level stiffness matrix it is based on the total degrees of freedom within the uh, elemental level okay so within the elemental level cross the number of total degrees of freedom within the elemental level. Okay, so here uh, the size is nothing but when we are going to use uh, uh, the two noted axial bar element for solving the one dimensional problem. So uh, you, you, you have to see that each node you have one displacement with respect to the x direction. So node number one, u1, node number two, u2. Okay, so each node you have only one degree of freedom. There are two nodes are there within the element. So that means the size of the elemental stiffness matrix is 2 cross 2 for uh, one dimensional uh, two noded axial bar element. So similarly, if you are using the two dimensional element like a triangular element or the rectangular element for discussion of the two dimensional problems, so then you have to calculate the total degrees of freedom within the elemental level. So that is the size of the stiffness matrix. Okay, multiplied by the uh, uh, the nodal uh, displacement vector that is equal to force vector. So with that, you can assemble. Next step is assembling the elemental equations to obtain the global equation. So you have to assemble the stiffness matrix and you have to assemble the force vector. And you know that uh, the displacement vector for the uh, entire structure and you can solve the general equation like k into u is equal to f here the k is nothing but the uh, global stiffness matrix u the dis uh, displacement vector and force is f is equal f is nothing but the global uh, force vector so with this equation you have to solve the problem but it will give only the uh, singular matrix uh, this uh, uh, k will be the singular matrix then you may not get uh, the solution for that uh, because you need to uh, solve the simultaneous equation here 
uh, to get the unknown nodal displacement vector. So, okay, so here the stiffness value is known and uh, for force vector is known, and then the unknown vector is uh, the displacement vector. And by solving the simultaneous equations, then you can able to get the nodal displacement vector u. Right. Uh, the step number eight is applying boundary conditions. Since the K matrix is a singular matrix, uh, so once you apply the boundary condition, then only you can able to solve the problem. Otherwise, the K will be uh, the determinant of the K will be equal to zero. Then you will not get the solution for that equation. So in order to remove that singularity, we need to apply the boundary conditions. It is nothing but uh, you take the uh, structural problem. Maybe it is a lengthy rod. One end is fixed, another end is free, and you can apply the load in the free end, so it will deflect. Uh, uh, sorry, you can apply the load at the free end in the axial direction, so there will be a displacement within the structure. Okay, so you need to calculate the nodal displacements each and under each node. Uh, so because here one end is fixed, that means on the fixed end the displacement is a zero. So for example, the node one is fixed. And uh, the uh, u1 represents the displacement vector in the uh, node 1, so then u1 is equal to 0. So, since it is a fixed end. So, solution of the unknown displacement uh, so, once you assembled and then you are applying the boundary conditions, so then finally you will get uh, the set of simultaneous equations, so which can be solved to get uh, the unknown displacement vector. Uh, by using the uh, Gaussian elimination method or Gauss Seidel method. Okay, so either uh, the method can be used. Normally, the people will use the Gaussian elimination method, and uh, you can solve the uh, the unknown displacement vectors. And uh, so once you get uh, the unknown displacement vectors, then you can compute uh, the elemental strain and the stresses uh, from the nodal displacements. So, so that uh, the expression is given. Uh, e is equal to dou u divided by dou x. This uh, dou u is nothing but difference in displacement. So u2 minus u1 divided by x2 minus x1. So here x2 minus x1 is nothing but the elemental length, right? And the final step is the interpretation of the results. The post processor computer program help the user to interpret the results by displaying them in a graphical form. So. Uh, these are all the uh, set of step-by-step uh, -step procedure to solve any structural problem or other problems, uh, non-structural problems, by using the finite element method. And uh, what what is meaning of the boundary conditions? Okay, so it may be either the displacement or stresses. Okay, either way you can apply as a boundary condition. So when it is a displacement. Uh, the x direction uh, displacement always represented as u and y direction displacement always represented as v and uh, uh, when the displacement boundary condition is applied on the structure it, it is in the x direction u is equal to 0 or in the y direction it is v is equal to 0 so other boundary condition is stress boundary condition so probably you can use uh, stress uh, sigma y is equal to 0 sigma x y equal to 0 or sigma x equal to minus f maybe some force is applied on the structure and uh, other uh, stress values are 0 we using this uh, uh, boundary conditions uh, uh, then you can uh, modify the uh, the simultaneous equations after applying the boundary condition and you can solve by using the Gaussian elimination method or Gauss ideal method. So here we are uh, the dividing the number of elements, the continuous or structure or continuum is divided into number of structure uh, and uh, you have the smaller elements. So, okay. So artificially we are discretizing. Okay. So then we are dividing into number of elements. So that process is called as the artificial degrees discretization, which is given in the second uh, option. Whereas the another type of uh, the discretization process is natural discretization. For example, the truss members. You see the electric tower. Uh, you see there are number of uh, the truss members uh, uh, are pinned together at the end of the member, and then it is formed as a structure. Okay. Uh, so probably so here it is given as like this. Uh, uh, you see, this is uh, the uh, member, truss member. 
okay so end of the trust member you see it is a pinned join with the other member so here also the uh, end of the member is pinned uh, pin joined with the other two members okay so now this uh, pinned joint is uh, considered as a node in the natural discretization so here we are not dividing the whole structure into number of elements whereas uh, uh, each member it is considered as a uh, element okay so in the trust members and uh, nodes are the uh, end of the trust member and pinned together with the other members so that point is called as the nodes okay so here you have the nodal uh, points and uh, nodal forces also can be applied you see here r1 is uh, applied in the right hand side direction that means in the positive x direction and that is called as the nodal force and also similarly here it is applied r2 this is also called as the nodal forces okay what is the degrees of freedom so when the displacement in the x direction is represented as u and if probably if this node is 1 then it will be u1 okay vertical displacement is u2 sorry v uh, v1 okay vertical displacement is v1 okay and similarly if this is represented as a, a node number 2 and the horizontal di uh, displacement is a u2 and vertical displacement in the xy direction is uh, b2 so similarly you have to write the displacements in the x direction and the displacement in the y direction so these unknown displacements are uh, nothing but the degrees of freedom in the structure okay so here this artificial discretization we take the triangular element and this uh, whole continuum is divided into number of uh, uh, triangular elements and it is uh, uh, considered as a artificial discretization and you see here the boundary conditions how can it it can be applied so in the discretization process what type of element to be used for discretizing the whole structure one is one dimensional element for one dimensional problems two dimensional element for two dimensional problems and three dimensional element for the uh, three dimensional problems so there are different type of elements on each category one dimensional element two dimensional element three dimensional element which we have shown in the uh, initial uh, class uh, the size of the element also it is playing a major role in the solution okay so error free solution it uh, will influences the convergence of the solution okay so size of the element is a small you will get uh, the uh, accurate uh, solution and also when you get uh, the accurate solution Uh, so sometimes it take uh, more computational time uh, so for that you need to optimize the number of elements so that you can eliminate uh, the uh, the uh, the computational time uh, so uh, it is optimization is very important that optimization is nothing but convergence of the convergence study is very very important in the numerical solutions or approximate solutions Uh, also then the aspect ratio of the element is uh, playing a major role on, on the uh, solution okay so what is the formula for aspect ratio is a larger dimension of any element divided by the smaller dimension of the element okay so normally we will maintain uh, the aspect ratio value is 1 for getting the accurate solution so these are all the discretization process with the uh, by considering the various parameters okay one is the location of node okay so location of node is uh, playing a major role here and uh, you see this structure you have the stepped bar uh, so uh, the nodes to be placed wherever you have the uh, and, and, and in the geometry okay so here uh, so there will be a changes in the area okay cross sectional area because this is larger cross sectional area then next element is uh, smaller cross sectional area so you have to be considered uh, placing of the nodes is very very important that is the location of node and you should not uh, 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 deviate from the discontinuity in the geometry if you are not putting the node here then you will not be able to get the accurate solution so it is very important to locate the node during the geometrical discontinuities and also the second point is discontinuity the loading okay so here you see that the density of the load is uh, smaller and here the density of load is uh, high, higher and uh, there will be a discontinuity between this loading and this point is uh, the discontinuity point and you have to place the node here okay so accordingly you have to divide the number of elements okay 
and third one is discontinuity of the boundary condition okay so that also very important uh, so boundary condition you see here there is a crack here and uh, you need to put the nodes nearer to the crack uh, more number of nodes so that we can able to get the solution uh, accordingly and uh, the fourth one is material discontinuity so this is one type of material and this is another uh, material and uh, so there will be interface between the two different materials so you have to put the nodes to between and the two inter in between the interface okay so uh, because the material property is changing from one material to the another material and this also you have to take care of the material discontinuity while putting the uh, discrete uh, location uh, location of the nodes and number of elements it decides the accuracy of solution okay so factors to be considered for choosing the number of elements it is based on the accuracy desired okay and the size of the elements based on that and the number of degrees of freedom involved so these are all the critical parameters when we are going to consider for the number of elements so i told that in the numerical uh, approximation method uh, then we need to conduct the convergence study to optimize the number of elements for example if you are using something like a 100 element you will get set of solution then when you are going to use uh, the one element for the same structure there will be a difference in value uh, on results uh, so some smaller deviation will be there so that means uh, then the the uh, the results are not converged so you can go for the next incremental element like 120 still there is a deviation and maybe you can observe that so the deviation is reducing the value of deviation is reduced when you are going to keep on to increase the number of elements so probably next step you are going for 130 elements then there will be no change in in the results and that means on the one if you are taking the 120 number of elements as 120 you will get some set of solution here and then on the uh, Oh, then you will get uh, something like uh, if you are using 130 elements also then you will get the same uh, set of solution so that means uh, there is no difference in the solution part okay so that means uh, e even if you are keep on increase the number of nodes like 140 or 150 then you will get the same solution so that means you can stop with 120 elements because the results is converged with the, the 120 elements so then you can uh, do the analysis so that you can able to reduce the uh, the computational time even if you are going for higher elements you will get only the same solution uh, uh, for the given problem so that convergence study you have to identify and you have to identify number of elements to be used for getting the correct result and you can do for the analysis